Well, hello there. I'm Rich Wysocki, a manager and software engineer. And today I wanted to share out adding Selenium to my financial freedom website. That way I could do a lot of automation testing on my solution. And I actually ran into a, a reason or a valuable lesson on using it as I was trying to record a previous session of my work here. If you're not familiar with my financial freedom uh, solution, uh, this is kind of a quick demo. It's a solution where you can log in, set up information about yourself, your financial assets, your retirement numbers, and then it gives you some guidance or some understanding if you think you will be able to retire comfortably based on the metrics that you've put in. So I have a couple different rules, savings by age rule, an income replacement rule. And then I also have, in addition to that, some what ifs uh, scenarios as well. And this one is a, a withdrawal calculator based on the amount of money you might have in your account when you are planning to retire based on the number of years that you're going to live. How comfortable are you in growing that asset? So this now this one's actually a plug in from another provider, but it shows the power of Blazor in injecting other websites into your own as well. So the reason I wanted to share this out was, uh, so number one, automation testing is very important. I'm about ready to, uh, or I hope some people might actually start to use the site and give me feedback. At the same time, I wanted to be able to prove that you can use Selenium WebDriver or any automation testing against Blazor. It is just a local client down onto your website. And while I was trying to record a previous instance of this, I, it, my automation test failed and in production. And I didn't realize at the time that, uh, you know, I had recently changed my uh, passwords. And so the deployment up to Azure, where I have my website hosted, failed. So um, even though it was running locally and I was testing locally, when I pushed my code up to production, it, it you know, the code didn't completely go up because of that Azure password. And so my automation test started to fail. So that's a great value in having automation testing is that it'll give you that confidence that as you deploy, you know that your solution is working. If you're not familiar with uh, Selenium or browser testing, uh, I, I did want to bring up that Pluralsight has a great course on it here, creating automation browser tests with Selenium. Great course. I've been watching through it and I'm almost done. So you might want to check that out. They do... They have a paid subscription if you want to learn on it, or uh, they also do uh, free weekends and stuff like that. In addition to that, there's a lot of other websites uh, out there on Selenium WebDriver and setting it up. And, I, and this is primarily what I used initially in creating my tests. And then I decided to, to go back and actually watch, you know, I started to watch the Pluralsight course. Here is my solution. Uh, if you remember from one of my other videos, and I've recently added in this section up here in the upper right on the automation testing in order to add selenium webdriver to your solution now i first added the project uh, just a regular unit test project so uh, you can right click go add new project and then one of them is that i added was a test project and in here they usually give you MS tests, N unit, X unit. I'm using N unit because that's what I'm most familiar with, but you, you could ch choose another one. After adding that to your site, there are a couple dependencies that you need. So let me just point them out again. A lot of the documentation that you go to will, will point these out. So the first thing that you're going to need is uh, the Selenium WebDriver itself. That is this one right here, Selenium WebDriver. You'll want to add that to your solution. And then you're gonna need a browser driver. So that might be Edge or Firefox. I'm using Chrome here. So that's what's gonna pop up and, and run all the tests. Once you add these in, you can actually start coding it, right? And so I'll walk you through one or two of my tests and then I'll run the example. I wanted to keep this video fairly light. At the same time, you can always ping me or message me and, and ask me questions. By default, a test project is gonna drop in a sample end unit test. So this was just a sample one that is in here. And then I started adding in my different level of testing. Primarily right now, I am adding in smoke tests. So really just trying to hit the page, make sure the page comes up. There's no errors in some perspectives. Look for a certain element on the page. And if it's there, then the test will pass. If it can't be found, 
uh, the test would fail. That's what I'm doing right now. So I do have this class here for anonymous tests. And in this one, I'm trying to do a couple of different things where I just want the browser to open once and then hit all the anonymous pages at one time. And, and that way, hopefully it's a lot faster because automation testing can be a little slow depending on the, the clicks to the pages and stuff like that. So in this case, I am using the a one-time setup in end unit, creating that driver, uh, setting uh, an implicit uh, weight here on for the time loads, opening the browser to the maximum capacity. And then it's running each one of the tests. And I did do an order on them. Again, I'm using end unit and I wanted to hit the index page first and then a different page. And so I did put an order on that. In my solution here, I am primarily uh, looking for an element on that page. Uh, right now I'm writing that out to a file and I'll show you that in a second. And then I am taking a picture of the page to prove that yes, I got to the page and this is what I received. And then I'm doing that check. Okay. And so each one of these is doing pretty much similar. So I might refactor this at some point. So again, I will run this in a few minutes to show you that it works and the output I also have a couple other tests here that prove that, that you can log into the website. So it's actually going to a couple different pages. And this one, I really just have one method in here. If I give the username and password, I can log in and get to the, you know, the, the main page or the index page. I do have a helper method to log in. So again, very similar, starting up the web driver, putting the maximum on the screen, and then I have a help a driver helper here, which is going to the login page. Let me actually go to that so you can see that. So the login navigates to uh, the authentication pages. Uh, I do a little pause just to make sure that the, the page has time to load because it can take a little bit longer on the login page. And then I find the elements for the first name or for the username, password, and the login button based on my configurations here that I'm writing out. I'm injecting them into the username and the password, and I'll show you that in a second. And then I'm clicking the login button. Again, I, I wanted to make it very configurable. So in here in my app settings, I do have the username and password that I'm logging in as, the website that I'm going to, and then again, the, the, re, the reports are where I'm printing out all the pictures from the website. So after it does this, it will come back to that index page. Again, it's finding an element and then taking a screenshot of that picture and then validating the text. Doing that as well on another login page, very similar. So when you run this, as I said, it's actually creating a folder. Every time the whole thing runs, it'll create a brand new folder. And in here is all the screen prints of each page I went to. And again, that way I could do a quick QC as well. So I can run the automation testing. If everything's green, yes, it actually hit the page and the page came up and it found that element. But if I wanna do another, maybe a more detailed view into, well, does the page really look the way I expected it to? I could quickly look at these things and say, wait a minute, okay, the page looks good. And if I see anything that's out of place, and this allows me to quickly look at a quick picture instead of actually navigating to each page. Again, it, it's not a complete validation that everything works. It, again, it'll give you that confidence uh, that you're looking for. And also, if there is an error, you could actually look at that picture and quickly, hopefully, see why did the test fail. So let's run it. So one thing, actually, I, I did want to point out, though, uh, before I run it is... Typically, I'm actually running these tests uh, against my local uh, system. So I'll, I'll, I change my app settings and I run it against my local website. Right now, I'm running it against my production website. In order to run it against the local website, I, I need to run it. So I was struggling a little bit around that. My way around it is uh, I actually created two solution files, uh, one for testing and one for uh, the code that I'm actually writing or the solution. Here, I'll actually run the solution uh, and then in most cases, I come over to this solution. In this one, I primarily just run the tests. That way, you know, I can have two Visual Studios open, one again running the solution and the other one running all the tests. So let's run the tests and you'll see the operations and then we'll come over here and see that a new folder was created. 
and all the images are in there. And again, this might take a few minutes. I'll try to walk through uh, maybe a little bit of what it's doing. So let's come over here and run the automation test. So here it opened up the browser, uh, ma made the screen maximum, and then it's gonna go quickly through each one of those unauthenticated pages. It's already done the index, it's doing the features, now it's doing the about. You can see it's actually fairly quite quick in each one of these. I can come over here and actually see that that folder was created. Uh, so I can double click on that. And actually, again, here's all those pages that are getting created. So uh, let's go to the index or default page. And there it was that, that came up. Again, it's still running. Uh, so you see the browser over here. All the all unauthenticated pages have already been completing. You see how quickly each one of them took three seconds, eight seconds for the first one, probably took a little bit longer for the page to load. Uh, and right now, now it's going to the login page, it's logging in and then going to the next page. So let's see that finish. Uh, and these, in this case, it does close the browser and restart it. So here's that last test again, it's going to the login, it's waiting for the login page to, to pop up drop in the username and password. It clicks the submit button. Again, it's doing a, a pause there. Now it's coming to this page. And then after that pause, it'll navigate to the next one. Or that was actually the login page. So uh, again, I didn't do really an order on the number of tests. So, and you see that they all pass. Again, the, the reason I wanted to do this was primarily around to prove out that a Blazor solution is just like any other .NET Core site or website. So you can use Selenium WebDriver for your automation testing, giving, again, giving you that confidence that you know that when you deploy, everything is working as expected. The last thing you wanna do is almost what I did again on a previous re recording was I was attempting to publish my website. My Azure password had changed and I was thinking that everything was fine. I didn't really notice in that comment here that it said it failed, you know, and then having a bad user experience. Uh, nobody wants that. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you want me to go into more detail next time. Again, I'm trying to keep these videos somewhat small and short. That way you can see the work that can happen and what you can do. Uh, and then if you want more detail, maybe I can go into that uh, another time or actually walk through all the different steps that I did. So thank you very much and hope you enjoy.